Okay. We're almost. <laughs> okay. We're live. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to our presentation. My name is Nancy McLaren Kennedy, and I'm a peer support worker and mental health worker at the Royal Ottawa in women's mental health. Today, we are having a presentation on perinatal mental health and the role of the postpartum doula. And this Facebook Live presentation is part of the collaboration between the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Center and Women's Mental Health at the Royal. The presenters today will be Christine Cook and Dear Dre Bain, who are both certified, certified birth and postpartum doulas from the Community Access Doula Program. And I also wanted to point out that they're also the co-founders of the Community Doula Access Project. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Nancy. Um, yes, as Nancy said, Deirdre and I are here on behalf of uh, the Royal Ottawa and the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Centre to talk about the importance of and the, uh, what a postpartum doula is. So we have a presentation that I will get up and running here. Thank you again for having us. Technology, there we go. So in regards to uh, what a doula is, um, doulas get that question quite a bit. Um, as the popularity is growing, more and more people know about what a doula is, but uh, there are birth doulas and there are postpartum doulas. And today we're gonna focus on the postpartum doula. Um, and this is a professional with experience, training and education in providing postpartum support to families. So what this support looks like kind of offer in three different types of support. Um, we offer practical support, emotional support and informational support. So kind of the, uh, uh, examples of what our practical support looks like is uh, in home, uh, our support is mostly in home. Um, so we offer meal preparation and cooking. We offer infant care so that the parents can get some rest if that's what's needed. We offer feeding support. So that includes uh, all types of feeding, uh, breastfeeding, chest feeding, bottle feeding and pumping support if that's needed. Um, and we're there to parent the parent. Um, the emotional support, we're there to answer uh, questions and concerns. Um, again, emotional support lends into the parents getting rest. So we look after the baby while they rest. We offer non-judgmental, um, a compassionate ear and um, ability to recognize the signs of mental health issues. Um, informative support uh, is mostly around offering resources in the city. Uh, should it be out of our realm of support, we offer uh, lactation consultant support or whatever other kind of resources the family might have. We offer evidence-based information um, through the training and certification of a postpartum doula. We um, have lots of training and understanding in information and evidence-based support. Again, uh, feeding support. Uh, baby wearing, if the family would like to know more about baby wearing, uh, infant care, so burping, the baby, changing the baby's bum, bathing, just kind of the basics around infant care. And again, parenting the parent. The, um, the postpartum period is just a time that the family really needs to be taken care of. So whatever aspect uh, that looks like, we surround our support around that. So the mental health, uh, recognizing signs, we certainly don't diagnose um, any issues of mental health, but we are trained to recognize what some of those issues may be and then forward the, the 
the parent onto some resources uh, for further help if, if that's needed. So how does the postpartum doula really give advantage to mental health support? Um, it's a special moment in a parent's life and is very vulnerable time and it deserves to be treated with respect and dignity. A postpartum doula can understand how to care for the parents to ensure that they have the best chance of positive experience at this time. So through the emotional, practical and informative support, we can lend the idea that the parents will have less stress because maybe the postpartum doula has taken care of some of the household chores and the parent isn't feeling as stressed. Um, they're definitely more rested uh, with postpartum doula care, feeling less anxious and more confident in their ability to parent their child, knowing that somebody is there to answer their questions and concerns and uh, lend a hand when it's needed. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, social inequality and, and, and impacts on, on mental health in the postpartum period. So currently, um, as a society, we measure and define postpartum well-being according to the presence or absence of postpartum mood or anxiety disorders. So organizations such as StatsCan and the World Health Organization um, collect information on the experiences of postpartum families in studies such as those cited here. Um, and this information is an important piece of the puzzle that is postpartum mental health. However, it doesn't show um, a full picture. So postpartum doulas and community doula access in particular um, provide services with the understanding that social factors influence postpartum mental health. So we see the expansion of access to postpartum support as a key factor in addressing social inequality in our community. And so some of the factors that influence postpartum well-being are listed here. So this table demonstrates some of those factors. Um, so it can be anything like access to um, adequate help, secure housing, um, workplace accommodations, nutrition, um, education, uh, physiotherapy and mental health supports, um, as well as the support of community um, or the absence of postpartum complications, birth related injuries or trauma, persistent pain, um, postpartum mood and anxiety disorders, um, relationship stress, social isolation, all of these kinds of things. So while the support of a, a postpartum doula can't relieve all of these problems, it can have a significant impact on the experience of a family. So for example, a doula can offer um, the connection to a supportive community. Um, it can, we can prepare nutritious meals to make sure that the family's eating well. Um, we offer education on infant care and the health of the postpartum body. And all of these things have an impact on the overall postpartum experience of a family. So here um, we can just see a graphic and each circle represents a potential systemic barrier for a family. So depending on their identity, a family could have one or multiple barriers that stack on top of one another. So an intersectional understanding of these barriers and the difficulties that result from them informs the way that we evaluate the needs of our clients. So when we work with a family, we consider not only the physiological factors that imp impact their postpartum wellness, but also factors such as those listed here. So their heritage, religion, race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, education, all of these things have a significant impact on their experience and their lives. Um, so this gives us a fuller picture of their postpartum wellness and their access to support services. So in the case of community doula access, um, each of these things uh, impacts the decision to provide care to a family. Um, families with multiple barriers are at a greater risk for postpartum mental health issues. And so they're prioritized for care. So we're going to just overview what the Community Doula Access uh, Project is actually about. Um, it was co-founded by five local birth and postpartum doulas here in Ottawa, and together we recognized that there was a gap to access in postpartum services. 
We agree that we did not only want to serve affluent families, but all families. However, it is not possible to provide care for all families um, on a volunteer basis, because that is just unsustainable. We decided to found this project and our mission is to eliminate the current gap existing in uh, postpartum care for families to low and moderate income. We offer services free at uh, point of care and we compensate the doulas directly for their time. So the access to the, our, our ac the community access approach is uh, pretty simple. Um, just existing on the guiding principles that every family, regardless of their income um, or socioeconomic status, deserves equal access to postpartum doula support. Doulas deserve to be compensated at market rate for um, providing care uh, in the community. So um, basically to achieve our objectives, we must not only match families to a postpartum doula, we must also raise funds um, to uh, be able to pay the doulas the market rate. So we, um, um, and how our model works uh, right now, sorry, is that uh, the primary care provider um, is the referring body to the community doula access. And then the CDA matches the postpartum doula to the referred family. The doula then provides the professional care at no cost to the family. And then the community doula access compensates that doula for care. So currently we are um, with our pilot project and, and where our funds are coming from in continuation is uh, funding, fundraising, uh, grant opportunities and strategic partnership. So how to access postpartum care with uh, the community doula access. Right now our pilot, our pilot project is partnered with the community midwives of Ottawa who are actually situated in our Ottawa Birth and Wellness Center. But we will be expanding our referral system as we are able to secure more funding. The referral partner would contact us and uh, we have a Google form for them to fill out. Then the doula is to be matched and reach out to the family and then assess their needs and then begin offering the support. So for low barrier access, um, proof of income or other private information is not required. This is at the discretion of the care provider. Uh, we will not be asking for income proof. The Google form will ask for the contact information, the preferred language, and our services are for low moderate income and for those so facing the socioeconomic barriers. So um, if you would like to contribute to this project and support the mental well-being of parents in your community, um, we are always accepting support. We, um, we are accepting donations on our GoFundMe page, which can be found on our Facebook and Instagram account. So what you can see at the bottom, um, we are at CD Access on both Facebook and Instagram. Um, if uh, our strategic partnerships um, we are hoping to expand them in the future. Um, so if you are associated with an organization that may be interested in engaging CEA to match clients with doulas, you can get in touch with us to discuss the options for a partnership. Um, our email is doulaaccess.ott at gmail.com. And you can uh, see that as well at the bottom of the slide here. Um, and if you um, cannot either donate or um, form a strategic partnership, that's totally fine. Um, one of the biggest ways that we um, raise awareness about uh, postpartum mental health and about the uh, role of the postpartum doula is through uh, social media. We live in the day and age where social media is so, so important. So following, liking and sharing our posts is super, super important um, in, in supporting our organization. So you can find us again at, at CD Access on both Facebook and Instagram. Sorry, it's good to mute, but also good to unmute. Um, so now I'm gonna play uh, a video for you. This is a uh, past client who received postpartum doula care. And this is a short testimonial of how she feel that uh, having a postpartum doula improved her own mental health in the postpartum period. Hi there, for 
me, having a doula was so positive for my mental health after having a baby. Uh, not only did I have somebody around who just knew how to read my baby and help me understand his cues, um, she just did so many things above and beyond. Uh, they also helped with things like around the house, things that constantly worry you because things are not getting done because you're constantly taking care of the baby. Um, she just has a wealth of knowledge. She really increased my confidence in helping me understand my baby, assuring me that I was, I was doing a good job. I had lots of complications post C-section that affected uh, breastfeeding, that affected my own health. And she was just there along the way to really help me um, confirm that I was doing the right things and I could never repay that. Um, if you're ever questioning on if a doula is worth it, they absolutely definitely are. Hi there. Oops. There we go. So that uh, concludes our presentation for today. Thank you for watching, listening, and learning. Uh, we're very excited to move forward and supply much needed support to all families in our community in the postpartum. Wow, that was fantastic. It would be a wonderful world where every woman could have a, a postpartum doula. That would be amazing. <laughs> so I'm not, I don't see any questions. Um, Aisha, are you looking at the Facebook? Uh, can you see any questions there? So I think what I'll do, because I'm not, I don't have access to where the comments are. I, um, we don't have any questions, sorry, on the Facebook. I just had to mute the cat in the hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. No questions yet. Okay. So I have a couple of questions um, for you then. Um, I'm just wondering what type of precautions uh, doulas are taking during the time of, of COVID and physical distancing? Yeah, that's a good question because obviously times are, are definitely more challenging now. Um, and as things open back up and we were able to start home visits again, um, all doulas, uh, um, most all doulas, I can't say all doulas, but all doulas on our team uh, took the public health online IPAC training. Um, and we uh, all uh, obviously screen our clients pre-visit and screen ourselves for any um, symptoms. When we arrive to the home, we only enter the home wearing a mask um, and wash our hands as soon as we arrive. So we're following um, the public health guidelines um, as far as uh, wearing a mask if social distancing is not possible and proper hand hygiene. Um, and we all took the IPAC training. That's fantastic, thank you. Um, the next question is, I'm sure there's people who are out there that are thinking this is a really interesting job and it's something that they would be um, curious about. How, how does a person become a, a postpartum, a birth and postpartum doula? I can do this one. So basically, the doulas are an unregulated profession, which means that there is not one training body. There are many, many training bodies um, that have different kinds of trainings available. Um, so basically, you do your research into what kind of training bodies uh, speak to you, what is the most um, in line with your values. Um, and then what is involved is usually four days of intense in-class training and then one year of independent study um, where you are doing research, you are seeing clients, you are reading all kinds of books and you are learning. And um, at the end of that, you uh, once you've submitted all of your assignments, you write an exam and then you are a certified postpartum doula. And it's the same for birth as well. Um, different training, different uh, independent study requirements, but um, yeah, it's the same kind of process. So it sounds like it takes about a year, a year and a half to, to complete that? It does. Um, it's, uh, it depends on the training body, whether or not they require you to complete it within that one year, as it is independent study if they don't require you to do it within that one year then um you can uh you can take longer than that if you need to but yes it should take about a year following your in-person training 
Awesome, thank you. Um, the other question is um, about the hours that uh, a birth and postpartum doula works. Do they work evenings, nights, or weekends? Well, definitely birth doulas are 24 seven. We're on call for clients around the clock. Um, and postpartum doula care is really at the discretion of the doula, um, but most doulas will accommodate evening and weekend hours and even overnights. So families um, need support at all different times of day, and there's not many doulas who are, are only Monday to Friday doulas. Um, so evenings, weekends, and overnights are also a possibility at the discretion and availability of the postpartum doula. So we may have some doulas on our team who would prefer to do daytime hours based on their own family um, needs, um, but we do have lots of doulas who are willing to do overnights, evenings, and weekends. Awesome. Um, I also have a question. So I imagine this sounds really interesting to a lot of people, but some people may be wondering what the first meeting would look like. So um, the referral goes in and you receive the referral and what are the next steps for the, for the family? So um, basically once the doula is matched with the client, um, we, we don't necessarily set up the time, like schedule the time and um, of the appointment. So the doula would get in touch with the family directly and set up that time. Um, then the doula, when they come into the home, the, the, the type of care that the family receives is really based on their needs that day. So often when we enter the home, our first question to the family is, how are you doing? <laughs> how is everybody feeling today? And then um, following that, what would you like to accomplish today? So if the family is like, we really are struggling with breastfeeding, I really need your help to get this going, um, then we can focus on that. Um, if the family says, you know what, I'm completely exhausted, I didn't sleep at all last night, it would be really great if you could take care of the baby while we rest, then that's what we do. So it's really based on what the family needs that day and it can change each time um, the doula enters the home depending on the family's needs at that point. Wow, it sounds like a really flexible a flexible service and you're really paying attention and listening to um, what your clients needs are. Yeah. I had another question. Um, if a family doesn't qualify for the community doula access uh, project, what are, what's the process for that? And also what are the fees? Yeah. So if the, the community doula access is the first of its kind in our city as far as we know of um, for offering this kind of care free of cost for families and that's why we want to use referring partners to help us establish the families in need for families that are affluent enough to not qualify for the program um, they basically hire their doula as like a personal contractor. So researching and interviewing different doulas to find the doula that's right to serve them. And then doulas basically work on an hourly basis with that family. The average hourly rate for a professional postpartum doula in our city is about $30 an hour. So you basically set up um, what the support looks like for that family, establish how many visits and how many hours, and then we we personally invoice our families and it's like I said, it's around $30 an hour for service. Thank you. The other question um, I'm thinking about is we talked a lot about a postpartum doula. What are, what is the role of a birth doula? Oh, okay. Well, a birth doula um, is someone who um, provides the same kind of informational, um, physical and emotional support, but our, our contact with the family begins during pregnancy. So anytime after the first trimester, we typically don't take clients on prior to the first trimester, just in case something goes awry. Um, but after that point, we would schedule, um, some prenatal meetings with the family where we would understand, um, what they're hoping for, what their fears are, what their, um, wishes are for their birth experience and we would work with them to help them to achieve that so we have a lot of knowledge about the different birth places um, which we go with our clients to whatever place of birth that they have chosen um, 
COVID has made that slightly more complicated, but we are being welcomed back into a number of birthplaces, including the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Center. Thank you so much. And uh, the Civic Hospital as well. Um, and uh, basically we, we, we support the birthing person and the partner as well um, by providing information and education around the birthing process and what to expect, as well as um, uh, comfort measures. So that physical support is really, really um, a lot of what we do when we're at the birth. So we're on call. Um, you call us in early labor. We're often the first person to join you at your birth, um, even before, uh, because we'll we'll go prior to active labor usually, or prior to the midwife or when you would enter the hospital. And we would really, really work with you to help you be comfortable, even in a very uncomfortable state of being in labor. That's amazing. Thank you. So it sounds like you also accompany clients to doctor's appointments. We don't go to the appointments with them, no. Um, it's more when you are in labor, um, we'll go with you to the hospital and um, when, when, you're mid when you go to your midwife as well, whether the midwife's coming to your home for your birth or whether you're going to the birth center, we will go with you. That's great. I'll, so I'll just ask one more time um, to Aisha, is there any questions on the Facebook page? No, no questions. Okay, so um, I'd just like to let everyone know that we do check back to the comment section of our presentations, because one thing we have noticed um, when doing the Facebook Live is that a lot of people watch the videos after the actual live presentation. So we will be monitoring um, the questions. And I also believe that um, what we can do is put up the website, uh, the link to the website for to contact the doulas and also maybe um, your information email. We could also put that up there if people have any questions. So uh, was there any um, last things that you wanted to mention, uh, Deirdre or uh, Christine? We'd just like to thank um, the Royal, you Nancy and the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Center for all you're doing for um, really reaching out to families and helping uh, families with mental health issues. And we just really enjoyed this opportunity to just share about our pilot project and excited moving forward and uh, supporting families. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you me. so much for having us. Thank you, that was, that was an amazing presentation. I have a couple of um, last minute housekeeping um, things that I'd like to say. So this may sound strange, but I said ladies at the beginning of the presentation when actually I meant to say people. So I just wanted to correct myself on that one. Um, the other thing is that as part of the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Center and Women's Mental Health Collaboration, we are running a couple of groups. One of the groups is a perinatal wellness group and that's on Wednesday at 2 p.m. What And we also have a journaling as a wellness tool um, group that's specifically for perinatal people and that's on Tuesdays at two. So we'll also put my email, which is nancy.kennedy at the royal.ca. We'll put that in um, the information for this video. So if you're interested in any of those groups, I encourage you to email me and I will get you registered and going. And again, um, we'll put the information for the doulas also with this presentation, as well as um, their contact email. So thank you everyone. And um, thank you, Christine and Deirdre. Uh, it was very generous of you to share all of this information with us. Thank you. Thank you.